How's it going YouTube and welcome back to Behind the Blade. This is episode 32. We kicked the week off on a Thursday morning. I left the unit at 5 this morning. It is now 6.30. It took me a while to get down here this morning. Ash isn't here yet. When Ash gets here, he's going to crack on with the hedge works, the spraying. And then once I've finished the field, he'll do all the mowing of the little bits. If you watched last week's video, then you'll know that I dropped a massive bombshell at the end. That we have now got GPS and auto steer equipment in the tractor. A massive shout out to ERH Services for providing this kit to us. It's all fitted now. We was out till about 11 calibrating it and this is the first time we're going to be using it properly. All of ERH Services details will be in the description if you do contact them for an auto steer kit. They also do RTK subscriptions. Just let them know that I've sent you. Give him your name and I'm sure he'll give you a bit of discount. Anyway, we've got some grass to cut. The Trimax is dropped. I've got to set a boundary line on the GPS and then we can get cracking. So I start off straight away on the boundary line and I've got the GPS set to the right of the Trimax. So I'm just driving along the edge of the boundary and mapping the boundary on the GPS. That's a lot of boundaries. But nonetheless, I get this done, and what this does is give the GPS an idea of where the edge of the field is. Once this is done, I'm going to set our AB line. So what this does is gives the GPS a straight line to work off of. I've already clicked A, and I just drive forward all the way to the end, click B, and that, as you can see there, the lines are on there, all set. And it will follow that with the implement whip every single time to keep the stripes nice and straight. So this is my first time using GPS, so it took a little while to get used to the fact that I was just sat there letting the tractor do all the work. But anyway, we cracked on with it, and by this point, Ash was already on the right, doing all of the smaller bits that the tractor couldn't get. But I just carried on going, and as you can see, we've nearly completed this field. It does need a little bit more going over, but by the end of it, most of the mess is clear. So the field is all mowed now. It took a bit of getting used to with the GPS and I did have to call Elliot from ERH just to get it set up perfectly. So we'll get a good test for it on the next site, hopefully. Ash is just about to jump on the line marker. Line marking. And I'm going to jump on the mower and do the bits out the front of the school and then we're good to go. So straight onto the right, I did all of the small areas out the front of the school. Ash had already done all the areas out the back, but this just included the banks and the frontage of the school. Ash had made a really good dent on the line marking already, so I headed to the front of the school, and this is the before photo of the hedge work. All the hedge work and strimming is done. Ash is still on the line marking. I've got one little bit of mowing left, and then I'm gonna move on to the next site. Right, Ash is packing up, and I'm heading to the next site. Oh, it's not going too great today. I've not even done a lot of cutting. Ash is just marking out a pitch with uh, the string line and the trike. Had some issues with the new GPS unit and I've literally been on the support for about an hour. They've been really, really good though, to be fair. I think it's just one of those things that um, one in a million kind of thing, but we're getting there. Um, update you soon. Right, I'm all done cutting this side. Basically, the steering motor for the auto steer has been diagnosed and they believe that it's faulty hardware, that there may be a cable within the motor that has failed, which is mega, mega, mega unlucky for us. We won't be using that GPS today anymore until the new motor arrives. Just catching up with Ash, he's had to string out a 5B5 and we're using the string lines today to reset everything to make sure everything's nice and straight. I'm going to pop over the other side now and start cutting that side. So I headed over to the other side and got cracking without the auto steer. And I can't lie to you, I already miss it. But we've got some time to make up. The only benefit is I've still got my screen so I can work off of that and get a rough idea of where my overlaps should be using the screen as a guide. Once I got a couple of pictures done, Ash got the turf tank out and we gave that a really, really good test after Bradley from Turf Tank came to fix it and everything seems to be okay. Hmm. So I am all done here. I've done a nice triple stripe the whole way across. So we've got three rows of uh, mower lines there, nice and thick. 
looking beautiful. Would be better if I could use the auto steer and the GPS. However, you know, I'm sure it'll get sorted. I'm going to leave Ash now because I've got so much to catch up on. Quotes, video editing, all of that stuff. I'm probably going to be up until like midnight again tonight. But anyway, ah, oh, keep cracking that whip and persevering. Just one of them days. Oh, it's Friday morning. I'm on the way to the unit. I just feel absolutely ruined. I don't know what it's been, but like the last three, four weeks, maybe every single day has been a late night and every single day there's been issues to sort out or address whether it's something small like a machine going down or or that we've got to go back to a site because of whatnot and just one thing after another after another after another then i'm getting home later in the day and having to work till like midnight or one in the morning pretty much every night and then Wednesday night stayed up real late to fit the GPS just as a little bit of a treat for the Thursday so I could just chill and watch the tractor do its thing and that doesn't work and then yesterday ended up into a ball ache and it's just one thing after another I just need some time off I think and a smooth week I just want a smooth week that's all I, I kind of want right now so anyway let's get to the unit and pray for a smooth day. A day at a time will make a week. Right, we're here at the first job to see who goes on the Hustler. Oh, no. <laughs> hustler brings strimming. Are you ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh. I'm going to go paper, right? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Never believes me. Oh. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I'm on the hustler doing the strumming. Ash will be on the right doing the blowing. Let's get on with it. And get on with it we did. Ash got the kit off the trailer and I strimmed all these areas up ready for us to start. I attacked the wide areas on the hustler and we had to go over this so many times. You can see the length of the grass. Again, this is a fortnightly and we just needed to get it down with minimum mess. But we did make a mess. So we got that tidied up and kept working our way through the parish trying to be as clean as possible. Now it's on to Dog Poo Alley. So we got to get this strimmed up, but once half of it was strimmed, we swapped over and I jumped on the right just to grab all the bits that we could on the right and try and get rid of some of that mess. Tidied up after ourselves, lovely scent of eau de poo, and there we have it, the final piece of this alleyway done, which means we can move on to the wide areas. And as you know, we work together I'm on the Hustler doing the big bits and Ash is doing all the detailing. As I'm on the other wide area that had no detailing, Ash jumped on the verges on the other side of the road and we started getting this parish done. Here comes the rain. It's Saturday. Yesterday turned into an absolute nightmare. A parish that normally only takes us about three to four hours ended up taking us eight. We had to like triple cut everything, tidy up after ourselves. The grass was so long. We had accounted for it. It was the only job we booked in for the day, but I was hoping for an easy Friday and it didn't turn out that way, which meant I had to rush home, sort out cut crew competitions, then more work to do. And then it was another late night. Anyway, Saturday morning now, we've got a school to sort out and the board of directors are in the school on Monday deciding what's happening with the tender package. At the moment, we only look after the school on a temporary basis. It's a monthly rolling contract. So we're hoping to make the place look really, really good, ready for the board of directors on Monday. Just pop into the unit to grab a few bits and I'm gonna meet Ashley there. So when I got there, I didn't film a lot, but we'd already cracked on. Ash had already started to tidy up and I'd strimmed all of this area. It all had weed spray and I'd started on this hedge work. Still got a little bit left to tidy but I can do that before Ashes catches up with the leaf blower. Once this side of the school was done, we could move to the front of the school. We started off with the strimming and the mowing, and I also neatened up all this hedge work. And as you can see, Ash is just tidying all of that up now, blowing it into a pile so we can remove it. But as you can see, all the mowing has been done at the front of the school, just a bit of tidying up to do. Just the last wide area of the frontage to the complete and once that was done we could move through to the final part which was the largest part the back of the school just doing all of the areas all of the grass all of the strimming any spraying and hedge works moving on to the field 
we got this done it felt weird not to have the tractor here there was a lot that we didn't film here but right we've left the school i've just been to Marman to collect the competition prizes that we drew last night ash is already headed over to find volta so let's head to the mighty find volta to see what's going on so by the time I got to find and Volta, Ash had already set up the trike. He'd got the blue in it and we started getting down those blue lines. We're doing the blue first before the white, but all the pictures are being done today. Now, some of the subscribers that have been watching for a long time may know this and some of you might not, but we come here every fortnight absolutely free of charge. We don't charge find and Volta a penny for the line marking. They do all their own grass cutting and it's volunteer led. Sometimes we help out and obviously they pay us for renovation works. But you're probably thinking, why on earth do you come here every fortnight to do this line marking with severe costs for absolutely free? So, well, I thought I'd tell you, this place is the heart of the community. They had a bit of a tough time and they moved to this location and it was absolutely barren not possible to have football pitches. We've only done about 1% of the work. Most of this was done by the amazing volunteers here at Find and Volta. But this place, well, this place stops crime in the local area. It gives kids purpose and it creates the community spirit that we all love and need, especially after COVID-19. And I can guarantee you that nearly every single one of these houses in this flyover shot has been impacted positively by the ongoings at Fine and Volta. So this is my chance and this is the only way that I can say thank you to the volunteers at Fine and Volta and to the committee for everything you're doing for the wider community and for those kids. You're doing an absolutely fantastic job and let's just look at how far this place has come since we started. And it's not 100% yet and we know that we're going to make it the best club in Northamptonshire. Everyone knows that. But in my eyes, it's already the best club. One of the best community spirits, one of the best group of people, and one of the best determination to improve the club. They've achieved over five years worth of stuff in less than a couple of years. And I'm so proud that me and my team can be part of its journey. So once again, Find and Volta, and all the volunteers and all the committees, all the players, all the families, we thank you and keep doing what you're doing. So after that little emotional montage on Find and Volta, I'm now in Stoke-on-Trent and we've just delivered Tom's new Alec Mower. Uh, he won that last night on the live draw. Thought it'd be a nice touch to hand deliver it. Insert photo up here, but yeah, such a nice guy. So he doesn't run a grounds maintenance business or anything like that. He's just mega into his lawn care. So he won that for just one ticket. So he won that machine for a fiver. So congratulations to Tom. And that's the end of today. It's Monday morning. Ash is out getting some work done. And this morning I'm just on quotes. We've got a few really, really, really nice quotes coming up. But first of all, I'm visiting Barbers Felt 46 in Olney, my friend Michael Platt and Alfie Smith to get a haircut, well needed, and I just need a bit of a rest and reset day. So let's go get the ears lowered. Uh, I've just been to the quotation and it was actually a really, really nice quotation. So it was at a quotation where I actually used to go to school and speaking to the team there, the same contractor has been doing that for over 30 years. And the school is more worried about quality rather than budget, which is really, really nice. Obviously, we can't go in with a ridiculous price because it won't go past the finance team. But what we can do is recommend the amount of cuts per year and things like that. And what that will do is help us maintain a really, really good quality, as you've seen in some of our other videos where the customer's not interested in extra cuts in the growth uh, period. It, drops the quality and also incurs a lot more time for us on site so it's really really nice to see a school like that i'm going to be quoting that this afternoon all quotes today so i've got another two little primary schools that's just mainly hedge work and weed spraying that i've got to sort out uh, and a few other bits and bobs but i might just show you my thought process behind quoting in this video 
It is Tuesday morning. I'm currently in the tractor and I've headed down to one of our parish councils. One of the parish councils with the large playing field that the tractor is required. Yesterday turned into an absolute nightmare. I got a lot done quote wise and Ash did a fair bit on the tools. Ended up in A&E at about four o'clock because the weld was just spinning. Whenever I shut my eyes, it felt like it carried on spinning. And uh, yeah, I thought I had uh, vertigo. Spent a while in A&E and ended up finding out that one of my ears ain't doing so great, which was making the world spin. But anyway, I feel okay today. I've got a prescription, so we will crack on. Just waiting for Ash to turn up. It's currently about quarter past six. And what we'll do is go over to the cemetery again, out the way of the town to make some noise. But before we get started, we get the right in the air because we've got some new blades for it. We were going to sharpen them, but it was about time for some new ones. And we've got the Gator Blade Oregon Blades there, and we're so excited to get them on. So we get them on and we get the right lowered, and now we can head out to the cemetery to get some work done. Starting off with the boundary, obviously. Right, we've done the cemetery and we've worked our way back. I didn't film anything because my phone ran out of charge and it's still on 30%, so today's content might be a little bit lapsed. Anyway, let's jump in the tractor and get the field cut. So we get straight on with it with Ash doing all of the bits that I can't do on the Hustler. I started getting around the obstacles to give me a fair chance at getting the rest of the field done. Still without the GPS, but it is in the post, so hopefully it will be here today. By this point, Ash had finished on the right and had started all of the strimming, and I only had a little bit left of the field. So I got cracking and tried to get it done as soon as possible. And once it was done, I headed back over to the van, grabbed the right to take over to Ash and gave Ash the chance to have a break from the strimming. And he started off on all the small areas that the hustler or the tractor couldn't get. And with the field completed, we started to crack on with the rest of the parish. I'm on the right doing all of the smaller areas. Ash is on the strimming and the hustler today and I'm following up and chasing him with the blower, tidying up as we go. Another wide area and Ash loves playing in a park, especially with a big toy like that. And once he'd done all the mowing, we cracked on with the strimming and tidying up of the other areas of the park. Moving on from that, I nicked the hustler to go do some more wide areas and then returned to give Ash the hustler back and I was doing all the border work on the right to make it easier for Ash to demolish the wider areas on the Hustler. And demolish them he did. The Hustler absolutely loves eating up the wide areas and it's really manoeuvrable so parish work for this machine is absolutely a dream. But we're cracking on with it now, working our way through the parish and in the end we ended up getting to the final piece of large area I ticked this off of the Hustler by this point we'd swapped to give ourselves a break from the strimming and then we could blow up and get back to the van. Once we finished here, me and Ash went and did a residential tidy for a block management company. Gonna whack the photos up here. It was mega straightforward, real easy money. The only issue is the payment terms are longer with block management companies. However, they can often generate a lot of work, so it's definitely worth giving it a go. Driven back in the Ranger to the tractor, because the tractor's staying here tonight, but I've had the new motor delivered for the GPS system. So I'm gonna get that sorted tonight, ready for tomorrow morning, and hopefully we've got the auto steer back on the GPS. <sighs> Right, I'm all sorted. As you can see here, we are back in business because now I've put the new fixed one on, it is like so much better. And not only that, even just driving normally, it's not as like tight and grippy. So the old motor definitely had an issue, but it was just very hard getting it off because everything obviously got very hot in that motor. I've had to replace a bearing also. So yeah, I need a bath, I need some food. It's nearly eight at night and I'm up very early. See you tomorrow. So it's now Wednesday and Ash picked me up at half five and dropped me at the tractor where we left it last night. And I'm on the way to the first site, which is a school, and Ash had already made a massive dent when I arrived. You can see him on the right there. But I got the Trimax dropped, the PTO on, the revs up, and we got ready, raring to go. Finally with the GPS. But I started off with the boundaries, and then either end where I was going to be turning, I set three lanes in, just so I've got some space to turn around. I also went round all the obstacles so it was ready. 
it's time to engage the auto steer to see how it's working and I can already feel that it's so much better. Even manually moving the wheel it feels less notchy so my thoughts are that the old motor must have had a clutch issue or something like that. Nonetheless it's going back to Elliot for testing but he did a fantastic job of getting us back on the road and I can't thank him enough. And as you can see here, we're onto the second stripe now with the auto steer. So I thought I'd check the overlap and everything looked absolutely perfect. I think I'd got my settings correct. Started cracking on with this. There's quite a bit of mess, but we can go over it again to get rid of some of that towards the end. And I'm enjoying this auto steer. I'm not going to lie to you. It's given me time to check my emails and do all the other bits that I don't normally have time for which in the long run is going to reduce a lot of stress. I can guarantee it. Are you all right? Yeah. Do you want to tell everyone what you've been doing this morning? No. Do I have to? Okay. <clears throat> well, it started out. <laughs> Mowed all the front of the school, trimmed all the weeds off, and now about to get weed spraying. The field is all done and I must say now that I've used the CHC navigation system and it's working properly, the first one must have had a massive fault on it from the get go because it's an absolute dream. Anyway, Ash is mixing some paint up, he's jumping on the trike to get the line marking done. I'm going to jump on the right and do the little bits around the field. He's already done the bits out the front and we've done the spraying and any hedge work. So yeah, we're in a good place. So Ash dives straight into the line marking on the Bocom trike and I jump on the right to do all the fixtures and fittings that the tractor can't get. Right, that is done. I'm going to leave the line marking in Ash's capable hands and get to the next site. So at the next site, it's time to fire up the CHC navigation system, unlock the Trimax and get that dropped and get cracking straight away with the smallest area of this complex. The auto steer is working faultlessly this time and as you can see the stripes are looking impeccable with those nice, straight, beautiful lines. I move on to the next large area starting with the boundary and same sketch as the site before. I set a couple of lanes in so I've got some space to turn around at the end once I've completed my line. I then move around the site doing the side boundary and then do the exact same thing on the opposite end where I'm going to be turning around, pitting a couple of lanes. I then need to set my AB line, so I click A on the GPS and start driving forward. And what I'm doing here is attacking the centre of the pitch, moving through the goal mouse, the penalty spot and the centre half, all the way to the end. This is going to give the navigation a datum point, and when I get to the end, I can click B and save that. And I'm going to work off that straight line the whole way through the field. By this point Ash turned up and I wondered if he's going to start on the strimming or the mowing first but we shall see. I'm enjoying the auto steer and as you can see he picked the strimming getting the worst bit done first. Now I'm excited to see in the future how much efficiency this saves and we are going to be tracking it. I know there's a couple of people on Lawn Care Legends that are already using GPS systems and one of them is Tom. I put a post up the other day and he said, why are you not jumping out strimming? So, well, I thought I'd give it a go. Let's see what this looks like for the first time outside of the tractor. This is the first time I have seen my tractor cutting grass from the outside, apart from when Ash drove it. But now we're on the GPS system on the auto steer. Obviously, I've set the speed really, really low in order for it not to just run off and cause some damage. But let's just take a minute because this looks like pure beauty. I'm excited for the quality that this, accompanied by the Trimax Pegasus, is going to bring to our clients. It's one of those things that I'm sat here thinking, I wish I got it sooner. I mean, look at those stripes. They look absolutely impeccable. And it's a lot easier to use than I thought it would be. All I've got to do is basically change gear now. It's a bit lazy, but you know, quality, efficiency, over hard work. That's what I'm going for. Ash is on the right doing all of the little bits that the tracks can't get. And then I can move over to pitch number two and I start off by setting the AB line, the same that I did on the other side of the site to give this side a datum for the lines. I got cracking with this. And because it was a bit tight to turn at the ends, I ended up hitting a double row because it was easier to skip a row. And yeah, also it looks fantastic. So we're getting on with it and the sun is out, so we are all happy. And Ash has started to blow down the lines, ready for line marking. There was a little bit of mess on that top corner. That seems to grow the quickest. And with me coming to an end, 
I can then leave Ash, get the tractor parked up. Whilst he's doing the line marking, he can then come and meet me. Right, we're at the final site. Drop the tractor off. Ash picked me up. Ash is going to be on the mower today, even though he was driving the van, not in eco mode. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been sat in a tractor all day, so he's earned it. I'll grab the strimmer. Let's get on with it. So we got the kit out of the van and Ash was already starting to make a massive dent in the first of three lawns at this property. Whilst I was running around doing the strimming, of course. Anyway, there seemed to be loads of growth here, but the right with the new blades was absolutely munching it and leaving a beautiful finish. Whilst Ash was finishing off the mowing of the property, I ran round with the blower after I'd finished strimming just to get all the patios and all the driveway tidied up. So now Ash is on the last part of this property, getting this all sorted, we can then get the kit in the van and head back to the unit where we meet and then we travel to Mower Man Garden Machinery. We're renting the Ransom Spider off of them for a new contract that we start tomorrow. So a massive shout out to Mower Man and thank you very much yet again. After that, Ash goes home, I grab the Hustler and head to this large acreage garden that I've just got to get mowed today. And it's a beautiful day for it. So I started off on the customer's grass track, race track, stretching the legs on the Hustler. I absolutely love using this thing here. I can then move over to the field and start setting those stripes. And once I've done that, I got the Hustler packed up and ready for the trailer. With that away, I can then use the customer's Husqvarna to do all of the little bits that I can't get on Hustler. And again, this thing's great to use. Now I've still got a little bit more to finish off here, but I just wanted to say thank you to all the subscribers and viewers of this channel. Now, as you saw earlier, we've got the remote control bank mower, the Ransom Spider on higher off of Mower Man for a new contract that we're starting tomorrow. And we're also starting more new contracts very, very soon. So make sure you keep watching Behind the Blade and stay subscribed to keep in the loop. But we've got some very, very exciting things coming up and I'm mega excited to bring it, one, to the channel and two, into the business. And to say thank you to the viewers watching this series or if you're subscribed, I want to give you a little discount code. But before I give you that, I'm just going to give you a Cut Crew Competitions update. We've had loads of winners so far, a lot of money's worth of prizes already. We've got a few really, really good prizes up on the website at the minute, but I'm asking for your help. We've got a Milwaukee bundle at the minute of garden machinery. There's over 1,200 pounds worth of machinery and the tickets have hardly sold. So the draw is on Friday. So if you're watching this video on Thursday or in the day on Friday, I'd really appreciate if you could go ahead and grab some tickets for that. But we've also got some amazing competitions such as any mower, up to £2,000. That's any mower of your choice, up to £2,000 worth of value. And the tickets are just £5 for that. So go ahead, go to www.cutcrewcompetitions.co.uk and use the discount code behind the blade. And that's going to give you a couple of quid off on me. And if every one of my subscribers does that, that's nearly £14 worth of discount. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get back to mowing. I need to go back to the unit, get the trailer back ready for tomorrow, and then that is me. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Behind the Blade, and we shall see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. I'm in a tree. Bye. <laughs>